Today, we're going to be building a Twitter style app, back end first, using Xano for the secure API and Lovable for the UI. It's powered by a real back end, secure, API driven, built in minutes without touching a single line of code. And the craziest part is, you can plug it into any front end. Because here's the truth the back end is the real app. The front end, it's just paint on the house. By the end of this video, you'll have a working Twitter clone real database, real API calls, and real post. No fake demos, no mock data, just a real product built fast and safely. Let's jump in and show you how it all works. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with Xano, our backend, and I'm gonna do this completely from scratch. I've signed into my account, created a workspace, and I'm gonna set up my first app here. You can choose build an app, which is what we're gonna choose, a customer facing web or mobile application. There are some other options like build with AI, connect systems, transform your data. You can explore these on your own, but for the purposes of today's demo, we're gonna go ahead and choose build an app and just hit continue. Now there are two options you can create with AI and AI will help set up your database tables and basic APIs for you based on your prompt. We're gonna skip that today and just do start from scratch so we can show you each step along the way. You can play with the AI on your own. Now there is this checkbox we wanna select here, include the quick start template. I would recommend this because it's gonna set up some basic database tables and API groups such as authentication that just makes everything a lot easier for you. So once we go ahead and choose that, we can hit continue and we just need to name our app, we'll call it Twitter. And one other thing here is Xano is asking us what kind of front end we're gonna connect this to. We're gonna choose AI assisted development like Bolt, Cursor, Lovable, and Replit. We're gonna use Cursor and Lovable for our front end. And I'm gonna walk you through each step. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Cursor here. Once you've done that, we can just simply hit create workspace. In just a moment or two, Xano is gonna set up our workspace for us. So here we go. I'm gonna show you around a little bit. We have our database here. And Xano has created some basic database tables for us because we cho chose the quick start template. So we have our account, we have agent conversations, agent messages, we have our user table and event logs. We also have some API groups set up. So we have our authentication, our members and accounts, and we can click into one of these and see what this looks like. So in our authentication, we have like auth login and we can actually click into one of these. And this is where Xano is really powerful we can actually see the function stack of everything that's happening with the authentication. And they even have this canvas view, which is a very no code friendly way to view exactly what's happening with the logic in your app. I really like this because if you use a, just a purely agentic builder that is your front end and your back end, you don't always get visibility into what's happening on the back end and you're sort of building in the dark. So as your app gets more complex, you can look at this logic flow and really understand how everything's working within your app. They also have an AI logic assistant that can help you with different things like add AI descriptions, can help you explain what the AI is doing and so much more. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be building a Twitter clone today and we've now set up our basic database within Xano. There are some other tools that I wanna point out like AI tools such as agents, there's different tools. You can even set up your own MCP server and all kinds of other things within Xano. But for the purposes of today, we're gonna to start with this basic database. We're gonna hop on over to Cursor and show you how you can use Cursor to build out the function for your app. Okay, so I have Cursor open. If you don't have Cursor, it's super easy to install. Once you get it up and running, you're just gonna choose Open Project. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder and we'll call this folder Xano2 and we can go ahead and create it and then open the folder. And now we're looking at this blank screen within Cursor. So what you need to do next is actually install the Xano extension or the Xano plugin here. If you don't have it, you can just go to extensions, you can search for Xano, and then you wanna choose Xano script. We can click into it here. If you don't have it installed, it's actually doing an update right now. You can just hit the install button and it will install into your cursor instance. Okay, so once you have that installed, you can pin it up here to your dashboard. Now we can just click into Xano here, and then we wanna click the get started button. We already have a Xano account, so we don't need to create one. I can go ahead and hit get started. I can log into Xano. I'll hit open here, and I'm just gonna have to log in. 
open this and I'm going to choose my instance. So we're using the no code dev instance and then we're going to use the Twitter one workspace. I'm going to choose Twitter one and then the V1 live branch. If you had different branches, you'd see those all here, but we only have one. So we're just going to choose that. And now what we can actually do is we can pull the latest changes from the branch. So we want to go ahead and do that. And what this is going to do is it's going to give cursor all the context of our backend. You can see down here at the bottom, it's pulling everything in. Looks like it's done. And now we can set up our agent instructions. Do you want to set up agent documentation files? And yes, we want to do this so that cursor knows as much as possible about our backend when we go to build. So I'll go ahead. Yes, set up agent instructions. It's going to take just a moment here. And OK, we can go over here to our file structure and check this out. We actually see everything in our backend. We can see our different APIs like authentication, all the different tables. We can see documentation, all the MD files, and it's all here so that cursor really has a full understanding of our backend. So now we're ready to go. We can start to build and plan our Twitter clone app right here in cursor. And then we'll show you how to push it all to Xano and then we'll build out our front end and I'll show you how it's all done step by step. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go over here to the right to the agent and we can say, I want to build a Twitter clone. With basic posting functionality. Okay, so we can just put that in here. And now this is really important. What we want to do is we want to change the mode from agent mode, which would just build this automatically for us to plan mode. And we can actually choose our model. I'm using Claude Sonnet 4.5 because I believe that's the best model at the time of this video, but you can play around with other models and see what kind of results you get. So once you have your prompt in here, we can just hit this yellow button and cursor is going to go out and start planning this app for us. We can see here, I'll help you build a Twitter clone with basic posting functionality using XanaScript. Let me ask you a few questions to make sure we get the plan right. And here it is, it's asked me a few questions like user authentication, should we have authentication? What posting features do you want to include? Just text post, what kind of feed functionality do you want? And what kind of post should I have? So I'll go ahead and answer these and I'll continue the build process. Okay, so I answered the questions. I just want sign up and log in the post using the built-in Xano auth, just text post, basic tweets, a simple chronological feed with like function like and favorite functionality. And then most importantly, we just want it to build the back end APIs, no front end, because we're going to connect the front end in Lovable. So I can just go ahead and hit this yellow button. And what's going to happen here is cursor is going to be off to the races to build out this entire plan for the back end of our app. Once we see the plan and we like the plan, we can approve it. And then I'll show you how to send everything over to Xano. So here we go. It's actually looking at our um, database structure as it exists. It's suggesting that we create a tweet, tweet table, a tweet like table, different API endpoints, including the API group tweets, um, post uh, slash tweets, and everything else here, including the ability to delete, there's key files, there's some notes here, and then here's the actual plan in order of what it's going to do, create, create table, build post tweets, get tweets on all of this. This looks good to me, so I can just go ahead and hit this yellow button build and cursor is going to actually write all of the code for this for our back end. And once this is done, I'm going to come back and show you how to get this all over to Xano. But as you can see here, the code is writing, it's going through each step sequentially in the plan to make sure this gets it right. We are vibe coding our back end here, which is super, super cool. Okay, so this finished up in just a couple minutes. And as we can see, we say all endpoints follow the Xanascript best practices with proper validation, error handling, and authentication checks. This implementation leverages the existing Xano authentication system. So perfect, we can go ahead and hit keep all, which will save our code changes. And now if we come back here to the Xano plugin, we can see that we have lots of different changes uh, logged here in the left hand panel. So what we can do is we can hit stage all changes. Now there's stage and we can hit this button here to push our stage changes to Xano. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that and we can see here at the bottom, it is pushing everything to Xano. It looks like I got a couple different errors, but let's head over to Xano and see what we're looking at here. So if I go to Xano, I'm gonna go ahead and log in again. Oh, here we go. And I can go to my database 
And let me go ahead and refresh the screen. Okay, so I am seeing some new tables. I'm seeing a tweet table, a tweet like table, um, and a user table, which we had before, but it looks like some of this did get pushed. So let me take a look at some of the errors and see if we can resolve these using cursor. Okay, so after just a little bit of testing, I was able to determine that the errors I was getting were easily resolved by AI. And this is a good example to show you that AI is not, AI is not perfect, but if you run into errors, you can just simply paste the errors into cursor, have it try to resolve them. And it ended up being a caching issue with my IDE or cursor. So I just reopened uh, cursor and everything uh, seemed to work correctly. Now, if I go back here into my dashboard, I can now see my different uh, database tables when I refresh and here we go. So we can see our post table now um, our user table, our conversation, and our account. So it looks like everything is um, set up correctly. So now what we can do is we can head over to Lovable and we can actually use Lovable to build our front end. Now, you're not just limited to Lovable. You could use any front end builder. You could use Bolt, you could use Replit, um, or anything else, but we're gonna use Lovable because it's super easy to use. And I'm gonna show you how to paste in the docs so Lovable knows exactly what to do. So we go back to our database, we can go to our API and we have different API groups here. So the ones that are gonna be important are our authentication group and our post group, because this is where our Twitter-like messages are gonna be posted from in this API group. So if we click into authentication, we can see all the different endpoints. And again, um, we can um, look at this in a couple of different ways. If we click into any of the endpoints, we can look at it visually, we can look at the stack, but what we wanna actually do is click on this link called Swagger Documentation. And again, here are, here are all of our endpoints. And this actually gives us the JSON for our authentication. If we click into this, we see this uh, JSON um, file, but what we can actually do is we can actually copy this link address and we can come back to Lovable and we can post in right here. Here's our API auth. And we can also put in our API docs. So what we're gonna do is go back to Xano. We can come back here, we can go to posts, we can go to Swagger documentation and we can copy this link address from our API docs. So there we go. And we can just go ahead and hit submit. Oh, I've got to log in. So I'm gonna log in here. And what's gonna happen here is as soon as I'm logged in, this is gonna start building the app and it's gonna reference our Xano docs for the backend. It can actually pull these URLs, pull the JSON documentation and begin building our app. So this is gonna take a couple minutes for this to build out our front end and then we'll go ahead and test it and see how everything is looking and how everything is working. We can see here it's streaming in real time. I'll build a Twitter clone with the Xano backend integration. Let me first check the API documentation, understand the endpoints and create a beautiful modern social media interface. Okay, so we'll let this run. We'll come back as soon as it builds and see what we're looking at. Okay, we're back. That took just a couple minutes and check this out. We now are seeing a front end to our app and this is what we'd expect because we want the, um, you know, the Twitter experience to be private. You can only log in and post. If you have an account, it's bringing us to an authentic authentication screen, which is hopefully connected to our Xano backend. So let's go ahead and sign up. I can just put in my name, I'll put in my email and then I'll put in a password and I'm gonna go ahead and hit create an account. Um, oh, I already had created an account, so let's just do ncd2.com. I'll hit create an account and check this out. We are logged in and authenticated. Now, if we come back to our database and we refresh our user table, we should actually see this new user, art at ncd2.com. We can see when it was created, the name, the role, and the password reset token. So great, this is working at least for authentication. Let's go back to our application now. We can see we have this nice character limit of 280, which is really cool. Let's just try a tweet. We'll say hello world, and we can go ahead and hit post. All right, it looks like it posted on the front end. We're seeing hello world, but the real test is, is this just happening on the front end or is this actually connected our, to our database and is connecting the post to the user? So let's go ahead and back to our database. We can hit back here, and then we can actually look at our post table and look at this. 
We have an ID for the post, which is number three, because I did some initial testing. We can see the user ID, so it's connecting the authenticated user to the post, and it's seeing the content, and it's also seeing the time that the post was created at. So this is working 100% out of the box. The only errors that we got were some caching errors in Cursor, but once we restarted Cursor and we staged and pushed all of our changes from Cursor to Xano, Backend, everything is working correctly, and we have a fully functioning Twitter-like clone app, albeit basic, but now we could easily go back into Cursor to add additional features like in API groups, like allowing users to like, post, comment, and so much more. This was really, really simple. In just under 15 minutes, we were able to vibe code our backend for our app, and then we connected it to the front end in this case is lovable. But remember, it's important to know that since we built our back end first, that is really our application. We can connect it to any front end by just connecting the API endpoints and building it out in cursor, um, bold, lovable, replit, you name it. So I hope this gives you a really good sense of how easy it is to build with Xano using Cursor and their plugin extension. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other videos like this one.